So up until now, we've not really looked at anything very, very practical in terms of building your own application. And in this part, we're going to look at the get and the post super global array. And we're going to build a form that allows us to submit data through to another file. Now, super globals are a special name basically given to global PHP variables that hold different types of information. Now, this sounds really complicated and sometimes they are. But in this part, like I said, we're going to look at the get and the post super global array. Now, if you've ever submitted a form on a website or you've seen a question mark in the URL, so let's just go over to the browser. You've seen something like the following, so maybe page equals one. These are actually being picked up on the server side, whether it's PHP or not, uh, it roughly does the same thing. So let's take a look at a very basic example and then we'll dive into something a little bit more complicated. So imagine you are running a blog and you wanted to link to a specific article. Now there are lots of ways to do this, but in this case, if we just go ahead and hit the index.php file directly, what we could do is in the query string, so this is now called the query string, we're going to pass through a slug, which is basically a unique string given to a particular record. And we're going to pass that in here. So let's say we had learn PHP, and these are typically separated by hyphens. So at the moment, then, when we have a slug like this, we'd want to maybe pick it up on the server side, look it up in our database, and then go ahead and show the record with this particular slug. Now to pick this up in PHP, we basically use the get super global. And this looks a little bit odd. It's a dollar sign as we'd see a normal variable. We have an underscore and then we have get here in capital letters. Really important that this is capital. So if we go and echo out dollar underscore get, what would we do here? Well, actually, I think it would be a good idea to do a var dump on this since we've spoken about the importance of dumping things if we're not too sure what they contain. So let's do a var dump on this and see what we get. So we can see here we've got an array with one item. We see slug, which is, of course, this just in here. And then we have a string learn PHP. So we know that this is an array. We know how to access elements of an array either by a numeric or associative key. So we know how to do this. Now, of course, we can have other items in the URI as well. So for example, to do this, we use an ampersand. And let's say we were on page one. I mean, this example doesn't make sense, but this will give you a good idea of what you can do. Now we have an array with two items, slug and page. So hopefully you can see where this is going. Let's go ahead and just output uh, the slug here on the page. So of course, to do this, we would echo out dollar underscore get, and then in our square brackets to access that array item, we would pick up the key under slug. So let's go ahead and do that. Give this page a refresh and we see learn PHP. So it's really as easy as that to pick things out of the URL. So you might be wondering, how do we even get these things into the URL in the first place? Uh, well, what we can do is create links in HTML, which basically output these things for the query string. Remember earlier when we looked at loops, we generated a list of page numbers. Well, we can actually do that again now and we can generate a link for each page and display the one we're currently on. So let's look at a very practical example of how we might do this now. So we know that when we have a uh, loop to output a list of page numbers, let's say we have page one just by default. Maybe we also have a search term here, which is uh, it could be anything. So let's just put learn PHP in there for now. And we have a list of how many pages we have. Now, obviously, this would uh, be calculated uh, in terms of how many articles or how many blog posts or how many topics there were. So really, we're just kind of hard coding this for now. Well, let's take a look at uh, replacing this here and this here with items from our query string. So if we go ahead and get rid of this and go ahead and say, well, this is probably being defined in the URL as search. And this here is probably being defined in the URL as page. So we now can pick these up from the URL. OK, so now if I go ahead and echo out and I'm just going to echo out an H3 tag here. Now, normally what you would do is you would put these into some kind of template. You wouldn't necessarily echo out HTML, but we'll take a look at that later. So in here, then we would say searching for and then in here we would have the search term. Now we know that we can concatenate on that search term variable like so. And we can do the same thing for what which page we're on. So let's echo out P 
just here and we'll say you are on page X and of course in here we want to concatenate on the page that we're currently on. So let's play around with this. You'll notice and we'll speak about this in a moment. If we don't have anything in the query string, we're going to see an undefined index. And that's because we are trying to access something from that get super global array that doesn't exist at the moment. So let's fill these in. We'll see this working and then we'll go ahead and play around with this. So let's say we wanted to search for learn PHP and let's say we happen to be on page one. Let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. So we're searching for learn PHP and we are on page one. So now the idea is to go ahead and generate a list of links here, which are the page numbers, and then be able to basically search, but switch the page. So this is a very, very useful example and something you'll probably do quite often. So we know that to output a list of links, we initialize a variable inside of a for loop. And then we go ahead and we say, while I is less than or equal to the amount of pages we have. Now we calculated this value earlier, but let's just leave it at 10 to uh, keep things simple. And then we went ahead and incremented I. Now in here, what we can do is output an anchor, so an HTML link, and then we can go ahead and output the page just in here. So in here, we can concatenate on that I variable. Now let's take a look at this and you can see that we've got pages zero to 10. We actually need to change this over to one. That would make a lot more sense. There we go. So pages one to 10, when we click on each of these, we want this term to stay in the URL, but we want the page to change. So all we need to do is build up a new URL using the search term, but switching over that uh, page number. And we know we have that available through I. So to do this then, we would basically say question mark search. Now what you can do is give the full URL to the page that you're working on. So you could do the following, but typically if you're on the same page, this will just replace the query string. So search equals X. So that is the term that we need to fill in. And then we're going to have and page equals, and we know that the page is going to be that I variable. So we can replace that in as well. For the search term, we know that's going to be the same. So we just want to replace this in again, concatenate on that search term here and we're done. So now what's going to happen is when we come to this page, we're on page one, but when I click on two, we've kept that term in there, but now this is switched over to two and you can see that this has been updated as well. So it's the same for any of the pages that we click on. It just works all the way up to 10. So from here, then the important thing is to check if things are actually set. We know that if we land on this page uh, by default, we'll see a couple of errors. So how do we actually check if these values are set or not? Well, what we can do here, and let's just get rid of this example uh, just so we can start afresh. We're going to obviously create an if statement because we need to do something if this value is set. So if the search term is set. We're going to say is set. So pretty straightforward. It reads nicely. And into this, we pass an, a list of any things we need to check. So in this case, we're just passing one in. But if you needed to check others, you can go ahead and pass them in as well. OK, so if the search term is set in the URL, then we want to create a variable called search term. This is optional, but it's always nice to create what we call a local variable so we can use this. Then we want to pull out search. Now down here, we can echo out that H3 that we did before. And then into this, we can say searching for, and then we can concatenate on that search term variable like so. So now what's going to happen then is when we run this, if we don't have search in the query string, this block will not be run. So let's check it out and you see nothing. Now though, if we go ahead and we say search, say for learn PHP, we do actually see that in there. So it's just uh, making sure we're sensible about checking what is set and what isn't. And you do really need to make sure that you check these since they are very easily modified from the URL. You'll be surprised the amount of people that try to change things in the URL uh, when they probably shouldn't. And that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's your job to protect against what you do uh, if things exist or not. OK, so we're going to cover this in more detail in the practical examples later. But for now, what we're going to look at is posting. At the moment, we've already looked at a get request to this page with all of the things that we need in the URL. Now, the difference between get and post, it basically depends on the request type. When we have a get action or an HTTP get action, we're basically just landing on a page. 
when we have a post action, we are perhaps submitting a form. We're saying that we want to post something through. We want to maybe create a user, register someone or do anything else. So let's take a look. Let's get rid of this example here because we know how to check things now. And we're going to go ahead and build up a form and then we're going to post this through to a new page. So for this, we're going to kind of mock up a login page uh, and you could do the same for a register page as well. So into index.php, I'm actually going to get rid of the PHP tags because we don't need these in this case. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up a very simple HTML document. Now I have a kind of macro that allows me to quickly do this, but if you are following along, you're going to want to copy this down. Obviously this course doesn't cover HTML, uh, but uh, it's good that you try and learn what this is. Essentially, it's just a document with a body where everything goes. So we can go ahead and output, say a paragraph in here, and this will just be a standard document now like so. Okay, so we're gonna build up a form. We start out a form with the form tag and we end it with a form tag. And in here, we provide two things. We provide the action, which is the page where we want to submit this form through to. So in our case, we could create a new file called signin.php. And as a second attribute, we define the method. Now, in this case, we are defining the fact that we want to post this through. And we'll see the difference between this in a minute if you're still not too sure. Okay, so I'm gonna build up a label. This is basically something that identifies a form input. And I'm gonna say that this is for the username and I'm gonna place some text in here that the user will see. And down here, I'm gonna create an input and this is going to be the type of text. So this is just standard forms that you would see on any page. The name here is username and we're gonna give this an ID as well. This is important because if the user clicks the label, it will automatically focus on this input. Okay, so now that we've done this, let's go down and we can pretty much copy and paste this for the password, it's very similar. So let's do this and we'll change this over to password and we'll change this to password as well. And of course the type now is a password, so it's uh, blanked out in the uh, browser and the name for this is password and the ID again is password. Now just a note about the name, this is very important because when we submit this through, uh, anything that the user's entered in these two inputs will be sent through to our page. So if we just take a quick sneak peek at this, you can see that we've got a field in here that we can enter some details in, and we've got a password as well that we can enter to. All right, so now we just need a button. So we're gonna create a button here, and this is going to have a type of submit, like so. And into this, we just say something like sign in. Pretty straightforward give that a refresh. And what we can now do, if we just get rid of this query string in the URL, because we don't need that, is click sign in, and that will go through to signin.php. Now at the moment, this doesn't exist. We need to create this. And because we've posted things through to that page or that file, we can pick up the name or the username and the password in that new file. So hopefully that makes sense. If you're new to HTML, just take a moment to copy this down if you are following along. But what I'm gonna do now is create that signin.php file that we are posting through to. Okay, so let's create this. So a new file here, we're gonna call this signin.php. And in here, this will be a PHP file. So in here now, we know that before we did things like echo get and then say username. Now in this case, it won't work. So let's just do a var dump on dollar underscore get and see what we see when we post this through. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter Alex and just any old password, hit sign in, and you can see we have an empty array. That's because if you look in the query string, there's nothing in here. If I were to add a username in here, notice that it does appear. However, what's happening is because we're using a post method, this is being sent through with a request body, not in the URI. You wouldn't want to submit this kind of form as a get request and have the username and password in the URI. You want it sent with the body. So let's check this out and let's change this over to dollar underscore post and see what we get. So again, let's just fill this out and click sign in. And there we go. So we now have Alex and I happen to enter the password as password, but of course this will be whatever the user has entered. So now that we have this then, we can echo out dollar underscore post this time and we can enter username here to echo the username out. So if we just resubmit this form, we see the following and we can do the same with the password as well. So let's just go and echo this on with a break just so we can uh, see it nicely. 
and we'll switch this over to password. So let's come over, submit this form again, and we should see that username and password just in there. So what would happen after this then is we would subsequently look up the username in our database and then we would check if the password matches. Now there are a couple of things around this because what we do want to do is make sure that we check a hashed password but really this is beyond the scope of this basics course. Okay so now that we've learned about this you should be able to submit forms using PHP and pick up the values either if you have something in the query string which is more for things like search terms and page numbers or if you wanted to pick them up using the post super global which is more for forms that you use to register users sign users in and do anything like that